Good afternoon and welcome to Ross Stein Park here in Chicago, Illinois for this afternoon's game between the visiting Milwaukee Dutchman and the home side, the Chicago T-Tottlers. At this time, I'd like to introduce the starting lineup and batting order of the visiting side, the Milwaukee Dutchman. Batting first, the second baseman, Nello Bothrop. Batting second, the third baseman, number 27, Venus Jackson. Batting third, the center fielder, number 45, Chesty Squiders. Batting fourth, the shortstop, number 19, Max B. Batting fifth, the right fielder, number 28, Bustles Muxin. Batting sixth, the catcher, number 14, Baby Margilius. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 59, Joey Bread. Batting eighth, the first baseman, number 58, Belly Legroom. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 88, Matt Moon. And at this time, let's give a good, dry welcome to your home side, the Chicago t Tottlers. Here they are as they take the field for this afternoon's game. Batting first, the left fielder, number 23, Umpty Pool. Batting second, the right fielder, number 22, Dim Barron. Batting third, the third baseman, number six, Eaton Mess. Batting fourth, the second baseman, number 35, Cowie Bangett. Batting fifth, the shortstop, number four, Boob Haxons. Batting sixth, the center fielder, number 30, Better Thrusty. Batting seventh, the first baseman, number 13, Crispy Yellow. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 14, Moopy Pound Cake. And taking the mound for this afternoon's game, the starting pitcher for your Chicago t Tottlers, number 20, Split P. Hammond. And a good, uh, good afternoon to you all. This is Howard Bologna from WMAQ, broadcasting live from the Rostein Park here in Chicago, Illinois. For this game between the Milwaukee Dutchmen in their away side, the bright, bright orange. There we are, the, the bright orange of the Milwaukee Dutchman. Taking the mound today is Split P. Hammond. Already a full count coming through. And he gets him with the first at bat. A strikeout. Hammond, that's his third of the season already. His second start. And the second one, Venus Jackson, hits another first pitch right to Crispy Yellow. And it is out right to first base. Two away already. First pitch for Chesty Squiders. Early season, batting 286 so far. Takes a one and one count. That is strike two down the middle. That's gonna go right to yellow and he'll take the job right over the bag. And it will be the end of the top half of the inning. So, one, two, three, the inning as it goes. And Umpty Pool will start things off for the home side. Second pitch on a 1 0 count. It's right to Nello Buthrock. And it's one away on the mound today for the Milwaukee Dutchman. Is Math Moon 0 1 so far this season? But he came in late into the second season, into the uh, last season. Oh, so that is a three-pitch strikeout of Jim Barron. And it's two away already here in the bottom of the first. Eaton Mess, another, another new uh, signing for the Chicago T-Tartlers coming from the Norfolk Whips. And he's going to make the first hit of the game by making contact to right field. Russell Muxen retrieves the grounder, and that is the first hit of the game. Bring up Cowie Bangett for the T-Tartlers. 
Ayat has had eight hits already this season. His average, a, um, well, a, a, a 5.33. It's still early in the season. This is game number five of our 90 game season this year with two additional teams. That is 10 games against every opponent. And the highest record after that is going to be it. Quick uh, jump on that one, but two outs, and it's an easy play from Buffalot to Belly Legroom to retire the sides. So it is one down. No score, just the one hit for the Teetotlers. Oh. And getting started is Max Beef, a hefty shortstop. Only 182 oh. this season so far. He's had two hits. 11 at-bats. He's got a career average. If I look my notes oh. correct, that's correctly. I believe his career average is 343. And that's going to be well, it's a difficult play to make. But getting his body in the way is Cowie Bangit. And he makes the play at first. So well fielded by the Dutchman. Uh, two of the best teams in the league at the moment. The Chicago T-Tartlers 4-0. Alone in the, uh, in the top of the standings. And that's a great play by Chris Biello to dump it over to split Keith Hammond. Two away already, and it is Baby Margilius. Baby Margilius, the uh, well, he lays down. There's a bunty laid down, and he actually gets the run out. He runs it out, so there we have it. One on, and he's going to try to steal, but a good jump on that. What a throw from Ubi Pound Cake. Boob Haxons gets it. And that will change up the sides. Bring us two Boob Haxons who just made the play. First pitch. And he does, in fact, ground it right to Max B. Throw to Belly Egg Room. He has better thrust. He had a great season last year. Really came into his own in Chicago. And he hits that one foul for a one-on-one -on -one count. Thrusty's career average is 364. Batting 375 this season. Still early again. 352 last season. 409 in 1919. So outstanding. And he will walk. So Math Moon will walk the uh, his first batsman of the day. Bringing us to Crispy Yellow, the first baseman. The Dutchmen are currently 3-1. and one. They have won their last three games. Only taking that first loss in the opening game of the season. I believe it was against Amalgamated Baseball Holdings. Oh, no, that was not correct. And they get Frosty caught stealing. Well, he... Trying to get the jump on it, but and it will be a strikeout looking of Crispy Yellow, so there we have it. Hits are very tough to come by. But we are just seeing what these teams can do on the defensive side from pitching, and in fact, from their fielding. Split P. Hammond. One of the uh, shining stars, the aces of the rotation are on the mounds today. That is Joey Brad with a liner up the middle. He'll be on with a single. And that will be the second hit of the game for the Dutchman. Fielded by Better Thrusty in center field. Here is Belly Legroom, first baseman. Was called up, uh, played 70 games last season. Was called back up from the Louisiana Lowlanders, formerly the Leighton Park Lowlanders. They have since moved uh, down to the southern parts of these United States, these contiguous United States. And he is going to strike out looking. That's the second strikeout today. Plus, he hammered. He's to the pitcher spot. Math Moon. Lord. Is high for ball one. Looking to lay down a bunt. Move the runner over. Joey Red to second. And it goes right to. And it is a fancy damn double play to end the inning. Well, not the conventional way. He bunted it into a pop up. And it was 
Uh, Joey Bradcott not tagging up. And that. Fancy Dan double play brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more fuff in your quaff with Fancy Dan. You can try their assortment of styling salves, crimping powders, and of course, gelatin based styling uh, items. Don't be a Mitchell, be a Fancy Dan. Part of the third, we're listening to WMAQ, the uh, Chicago T Tartle, the, the home of Chicago baseball, both the Chicago T Tartlers and the expansion side, the Chicago Gin Drinkers. And that is a huge, big opening double by Splippy Hammond, the pitcher. Well, he has shown that he has the hitting prowess. Yet he recorded seven hits last season. That is his first hit of the season. And uh, Umpty Fool will in fact uh, go over two right now as he pops it up into shallow outfield. This brings up Dim Barron, struck out on his first at bat. Who will know the count of Matt Boone, keeping that pitch count very nice and low. He's uh, first outing. I believe he went... He did have to make a second appearance, but uh, that is going to be a good fielding play by Venus Jackson. Florida Belly Legum is in time. Strands the one runner. This is the pitcher. It is scoreless after three. We head to the top of the fourth in this game. It is a pitcher's duel, as they were to say. Split key Hammond on the mound. Hammond had a no decision in his opening game. Gets Nello Buffroth second time around. He had him striking out the first time. Here is Venus Jackson yet again. And Jackson takes ball one. Two and oh, and that is another one high or inside for ball three. Let the Hammond uh, in last year's oh, season. Take it, man. In, um, well, he averaged about, uh, if I can do my maths, about, um, he goes about seven ball. innings strong, so he's got the fortitude. He has been taking his horse tonics ever since they have been legalized here in the Continental League of American Baseball. And uh, he has really shown that he's got good control of that baseball. He has taken the uh, the ace spot in the rotation for the T-Tartlers. He has quickly become the star pitcher. And they have built that rotation and the bullpen around Hammond as he gets Venus uh, gets Chessie Squiders to fly out to Umpty Pool in the field. Two outs, top of the fourth. Big swing by Max Beef. Ball. Outside. This one is outside for two and one, the count. Low. Three and one. Runner on first, two hey, outs. Hey, hey. Fills up the count with a pitch that Max Beef just watches go by. Ball. And that is going to be a, another walk. So Keith will go to first. One for one, he had a single today. Facing Matt Moon, who is having just as good of a day, and he gets him swinging, Eaton Mess. Average of 467 so far this season, seven for 15 in his at-bats, not in counting today's. He's not an easy out to get. Great pickup from the Norfolk Quips of the Nursery League. This is how he Bang it, a, well, he grounds out, doesn't get good, doesn't make good contact, goes right to Moon, throw to leg room. 
for out number two. That's Cowie Bangett is a true and true T-talker. He's been on this is his third season with Chicago. Now we see what Boob Haxons has. He's going to hit it high and far, and it is to industry. Boob Haxons has done it. He has broken the deadlock in this game with a solo home run. His third of the season career home run number seven and it is to industry a one to nothing game in favor of the Chicago T-Topplers right outside of that is better thrusty cannot find a hit today yet he lines it right out in the infield but well, that is the end of four as David Margilis takes the plate that home run is brought to you by industry brand colognes perfumes and other fragrances because if you can smell like one thing in this world why would you choose anything other than the clean, fresh scent of industry? Found wherever smells are sold. This is Hubba Baloney here at WMAQ. Giving you play-by-play, pitch-by-pitch coverage of the Chicago t Talkers in their fifth game of this 90-game Central League season of 1921. They face the Milwaukee Dutchman as Davy Margilius uh, pops it up into foul territory, caught by Booby Pound Kick, out number one, top of the fifth. And Joey Bread, who is one for one today with a single. Hits have been at a premium for both sides. Boob Haxons, bottom of the fourth. Home run, solo home run is the difference maker right now. That is going to be another hit for Joey Bread. Second single, he's two for two today. And deep in the lineup, that is a fantastic. He is only batting 133 this season so far. So I am uh, very impressed by that. That is outside for ball one. Nelly Legroom struck out looking in his first at bat. He hits, he hits at Skyward. And it's an easy catch for Umpty Pool. He had so much time he could have ordered himself a cocktail and finished it probably in the time that that ball took to land. He was able to get himself set, make the catch, and record the second out. Here's Matt Moon. Hit into a double play. Uh, and he's only at bat today, the pitch out. No reason to see him or Split P. Hammond uh, take the bench anytime soon. And he's going to get the pitcher looking again. That is strikeout number three today for Split P. Hammond, which is more than he had in his opening uh, stance. In his opening game, he had two so far. He's got three today. He is dealing it quite well. And crispy yellow starts things off one and one after he hits that first one out. He was at the plate, of course, while Petty uh, Rusty was caught stealing. Oh, excuse me. Uh, no, excuse me. He was not caught stealing. Uh, uh, that is uh, that is out number one. My mistake. Here is Moopy pound kick to the plate. Still in the season. We're still getting the, the kinks out. We have uh, two new teams. The Chicago Gin Drinkers, I myself am not used to uh, necessarily uh, having to call games twice as frequently for the uh, here in the, the great, great city of Chicago as Ruby Pound Cake is going to strike out swinging as is his second strikeout today. This brings up the pitcher spot, Split P. Hammond. Two outs, bottom of the fifth. It's a one to nothing game in the, uh, the, the, the very much the pitcher's duel. It's right down the middle. I don't think Hammond is going to be well. So he got his double in his first at bat. He's going to get that one just to the edge of the of the outfield, and he outruns it. So that is a single for Split P. Hammond. A second hit for him today. He's two for two. He is really dealing it. If it are both hits and pitches. Back to the top of the lineup. Empty Pool is 0 for two today. So an average is on 4 12. Again, we're very early. This is only game five of the season, so those numbers may normalize, we see, but uh, again, uh, a 4 12 average which is outstanding. He's got a career average of 328, 332 last season, so that would be amazing. And he's going to be on, as uh, that was a difficult ball to deal with. I believe that went to Venus Jackson at third base. 
and it is runners on first and second with two outs. Now we have Jim Barron up, one of the premier. I believe he had 16 home runs last season. He's yet to break the deadlock so far this season. And that is going to go off the glove of Argelius. And that will be recorded as a passed ball. That will be the runners. And nothing doing. It was a strikeout swinging for Dim Barron. He will go 0 for 3 today. And with runners in scoring position nonetheless. We're through 5. It is 1 to nothing. It is very much anybody's game, as they were to say. Here in the early stages of the Continental League for the year 1921, a bit of a delayed start this season. We started June 1st. We'll go into the end of September. And Nello Bothrot will swing and go have a sit down. Split P. Hammond has now struck out four. And is still looking very fresh. Full of vim, vigor, vitality, and perhaps virility. I don't know what he does on the weekends. I don't know what he does on the off days. But uh, I presume he could be very virile if he wanted to. Dennis Jackson's going to ground that one up to the Both if Crispy Yellow is in time. Here is Chesty Squiders. Squiders has had a bit of a uh, slow start to the season. But he's come around. Recent games has really turned it on. One home run, I believe that was in the last game. And he's going to make contact with that. That's going to be a good two-out single. Straight to center field, ground ball. But a thrusty makes the play. And two outs, top of the sixth. Here is Max Beef. He has walked once today. Into one oh. otherwise. Definitely struggling so far this season. Makes contact on that one. That is a fly ball to the corner of left field. Humpty Pool is chasing it. It is going to be well. It looks like Squiders is going to round third and go right home. It is an RBI single for Max Beef. And we are tied up and coming in for Max Beef is a pinch runner, Deep Harris. A very interesting play at this point. And he got him stealing, but they chase him down. He's caught stealing. And that will prematurely bring an end to the inning as far as the Dutchmen are concerned. But they must be seeing something that many of us are seeing, which is that runs might be coming at a premium today. And Hoon McMunch... We'll come in at shortstop. And move into that cleaning up spot of the lineup for the Dutchman. For Hoon McMunch, a shortstop. For the pickup. Uh, well, actually, they picked him up from the Louisiana side last year, and he has uh, proved his worth on his medal. And uh, that's going to be Eaton Mess, his second hit of the game. He's now 2 for 3, bringing up Kawi Bangan, who's 0 for 2 today. Eaton Mess. That is hit number nine for him this season in 18 at bats. That is batting 500. Small sample size, I know, but a strong, strong start to the season. Fouls it off for strike two. No outs. Pulls a swing. On his high. Ah, he watches that one go by. Math Moon dealing the strikeouts as well. That's strikeout number six. No, excuse me, seven for Matt Moon today. Seven. Boob Haxon, oh, don't tell me he's done it again on the second pitch to industry. He has done it yet again. Eaton Mess crosses the plate. And Boob Haxons has taken this game and given it back in favor One. of the Teetotalers. Bottom of the sixth, a two-run home Four. run. And a thrusty who will walk. Matt Moon still has a lot in the gas tank. You know he can go late. Are they going to? Yes, they are going to go to Food Thoid. 
in the bullpen. Who would have thought it that that reliable bullpen reliever for the Dutchman? Follow. Two and two the count. That is right into the glove of Joey Bread, crispy yellow off for three today. And that is out number two, bringing us to Mupi Pound Cake, who's off for two today. Spells that one off, 0 and 2 the count. Pound Cake struck out twice. That's going to get right past the glove of Thoid. And it's going to get past the glove of, Mc of Chesty Squibers as well, or McMunch as well. It is a single for Pound Cake. And it is runners on first and second now. Flippy Hammond pops that one up into foul territory, swinging on the first pitch, trying to get the rally conti to continue on, but he ends up popping out. Belly leg room. And we are through six. And what a game we have in store. The final three innings. Really could be anyone's game. It is three to one. Plus the home run from Boob Haxon, his second of the game. And Buster's Muxen is going to be on with a single. One one pitch. He makes contact like this center field. We see Baby Margilius, who is one from today. Plus the home run from Boob Haxon is brought to you by Industry Brand Colognes, Perfumes, and Fragrances. Why smell like anything? He's not the clean first set of industry into industry. Oh my goodness. Well, we have a tie game yet again. A two-run home run from Baby Margilius. Of two industry yet again, my goodness. It is tied at three. It is Margilius' is only his second home, his second career home run. His first of the season. No. His second overall in Continental League play. In fact, even in his time for the Louisiana Lowlanders, he did not hit a single home run. And swinging and a miss is Joey Bread, his first time not finding himself on base today. And that will do it for Split P. Hammond's Day. In comes Dervish Chops. Dervish Chops coming in after six and a third innings. Seventh and belly legroom coming out for Mantham Spawns. Inside. Bolt. Umpty Pool, top of the order, his fourth and battery, one to three. Still facing Food Thoid Inside. for the Dutchman. Full count. And that is going to be just foul. Full count yet again. And that is high up into the air. Should be an easy catch. Chesty Squire just makes it. And it is one away. Dim Baron. One and one after his that one foul. He is 0 for 3 today. Two strikeouts. Big swing on that one. Full count yet again. And he will strike out looking. That is his third time striking out today. Hood Thoid has seven strikeouts this season. That is number eight for him. 
making the Excitement of today's game has caused a, uh, a, a, a new wave of fans to suddenly find themselves at the gates, uh, wandering in and seeing the last uh, last few innings of our, of our game today. Uh, we, we, of course, welcome uh, any fans to come to uh, here in Rothstein Park, the ballpark. And that is going to be popped up high into the air. Put me pound cake with the catch. And that is uh, one away. Getting Venus Jackson. Dervish Sharps still on the mound for the Teetotlers coming in for Split P. Hammond. I believe uh, De uh, Split P. Hammond put in a good six and a third innings, if I, uh, my, my notes are correct. Uh, this is Hubba Baloney. You're listening to WMAQ, Chicago Radio, and the home of Chicago Baseball. Now twice no. as powerful as we welcome the Chicago Gin Drinkers to the Continental League here in 1921, in addition to the Chicago Teetotalers. So a nice little intra-city, or inter-city, I suppose, rivalry. I'm sure this would be nothing more, um, this would be nothing more than just a fun, spirited, friendly rivalry, I'm certain. It's just baseball after all, why not? Here is Poon McMunch. That's the Chessie Squiders is walked Two first, runners on first and second, one out. Nick Munch. This is his first at bat. And that is foul for a full count. Well, it's going to end up being a fielder's choice. They could not get the fancy down double play. But they do get one of the two remaining outs necessary. And that will be a pop-up from Bustle's Muxin. And we get back to the bottom of the eighth. Coming in to field instead of Matt Rock Danger, it will be Ben Sex. So Ben Sex coming in at second base. You recall uh, Matt Rock Danger came in as a pinch runner for Nello Bufferot. Ben Sex was another one of the pickups from the Louisiana Lowlanders, the minor league affiliate of the Milwaukee Dutchman. Howie Bang it. Just not find uh, a hit today. Well, this man can. It's Boob Haxons. He's got two home runs, and he represents all three no. runs that were scored by the Chicago T Tartars today. A solo home run, and then a two-run home run in his second and third at bats today. No more. Well, he couldn't do it a third time, could he? Full count is full, and if I'm food thawed, I'm not giving him anything easy to hit and tries to get him looking, but he checks his swing and walks and, well, for fear of a, what we're looking at, a tie game late in this one, bottom of the eighth, walk of the uh, most potent hitter today for Chicago. Can't say I blame him. This is better thrusty. Number one today, he's walked twice. He will pop that one up. Is that going to drop? Yes, it will. Drops into the dead zone. 
and Mantham spawns in left field. Has to retrieve it, and coming in now is Jonathan Mushboy. So that will be it for Food Floyd, and Jonathan Mushboy has to, well, that's gonna be, I don't know if that'll be a pass the ball. But uh, it does move the runners, so runners are in scoring position for the T-Tartlers. Only one out, this is a great opportunity, and that is a tough, tough dive. Nick Bunch tries to make the play, makes the play at first. But it is an RBI for Crispy Yellow. And that gives the T-Tartlers the lead here in the bottom of the eighth. Two outs. And it looks like they are going to walk Moopy Pound Cake. They will. That is an intentional walk to get to what I believe is going to be the pitcher spot. But I cannot imagine they will go to him. Yeah, they're going to go to Boxer Ribeye. right to Joey Brad, he'll stop on the bag. And that'll be it. So, Sandy Carfax comes in to face the lower end of the Dutchman lineup to put an end to this game, get a save. And yes, Dub Straining will come into center field, a fielding position uh, change that the Pete Artists attempted to make. Batsman is Baby Margilius, who has the two-run home run today, and he will be on with a double. He is well. I don't. I can't imagine he will get another at bat today. Well, I have said things and uh, I have regretted them immediately before, but he is a, a triple away from the cycle. A single for him, a home run, and a double for Baby Margilius. What a day for him! My goodness. And this is Sandy Carfax coming in out of the bullpen. Not the closing pitcher, the closing pitcher is Filipino Horseman, who has, uh, will not be, uh, oh, Jay appears, and that is going to be a walk for Joey Red, who has had two hits today, and that puts the go-ahead run on first for Mantham Spones. <laughs> Tries to lay down a bunt, and it is foul. It goes foul. Oh, and two foul yet again. Straining, but a throw keeps the runners. On the plate, uh, on the on their bases. So one away. Sandy Carfax facing Jonathan Mushboy. Which again, interesting. That is another foul bunt. They're gonna just use him to bunt over. Or will they? This is a very interesting play by the Dutchman, choosing to keep the pitcher on in the lineup, so they'll go to Mushboy again, should we go to extras. That is going to do just wonderfully to move the runners, so that is a great, great sacrifice bunt. Two outs, and now we go to Ben Sex, who hits that with vigor, right to the glove of dumb straining, and that will do it, it was a nail biter. But the Chicago Teetotlers remain undefeated and hurrahs and huzzahs around. They do maintain their 5-0 record now by defeating the Milwaukee Dutchman. The final score of this game, the Chicago, uh, the Milwaukee Dutchman, three runs off nine hits. 
The Chicago Tea Turtlers, four runs off nine hits. And you can imagine uh, when both these teams coming in with one loss between the two of them, you can see why these are going to be two very difficult teams to contend with in the Continental League this season if, if, uh, early, if early season form is what to be seen. And we see uh, winning pitcher today goes to Dervish Sharps getting the win on his record. Food Thoid given the loss. And Sandy Carfax coming in in the ninth inning gets the save. And of course, we thank our friends at the Honey Wheat Tobacco Company who bring to you our finest dandies of the day. Honey Wheat Tobacco, they are fresh, hand-rolled cigarettes grown in the fabled tobacco roads of the Carolinas. They are smooth, they are clean, they are, they are sweet tasting, they are fresh tasting, and they can be enjoyed anywhere. In school, at the workplace, at the bar, at the local delicatessen or right here in Rothstein Park. Anytime is a good time for a honey wheat cigarette. Our third finest standing of the day is the pitcher for the Chicago Tea Turtle, the split key Hammond, going six and a third innings, and giving up seven hits, three earned runs. He had quite a few uh, strikeouts. I think the last the count I had was five. Um, the second finest standing of the day, Baby Margilius, gets the home run to tie the game up three to three before. The G Toddlers got the final win. He went three for four today. Great, great day. That's probably one of the best. That's a banner day for Baby Margilius. He is in his in his early Continental League season, uh, uh, career. That is probably one of the best days I think he's had so far. But the finest dandy of the day, getting a complimentary carton of honey wheat cigarettes, is Boob Haxons of the T Toddlers hitting two home runs, batting in three of the four runs from said home runs. He is the finest dandy of the day. Brought to you by the Honey Wheat Tobacco Company, who always remind you to smoke wheat every day. Well, we have quite the game tomorrow as these are two game series to get things started. I believe on the mound for the Chicago Tea Tartars will be Bendy Water, taking on Savid Bowie for Milwaukee. Those are games, of course, are happening tomorrow. Uh, before both teams head off and in two, gay, two days time well the tea Tartars will be back here at Rothstein Park but they will be using the away team dugout as that will be the first game between the Chicago tea Tartars and the expansion side Chicago gin drinkers I cannot wait to see that one I will be on the call as always I'm Hubba Baloney this is WMAQ we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and until next time stay dry everybody